I've been told that this is capital F fragile, so they were right. I've never seen anything like this. Some people just have a vision. Hey, what do you see in that cloud? Oh, I see an entire camel with a right. Is that a monkey? Yes. That's a monkey on the top of a camel. <laughs> I've never seen a gemstone this long before. Very mountainous, yeah, it seems to have one prominent point of interest. Can I remove the cloth? Oh, there's a clue first. Let's play the match game. We're getting pyrotechnical here today. Or is it matching, like, bad jokes? Can I go ahead and peel it back? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, I said one point of interest, but I was very wrong. We have many points of interest today. Big ol' conch shells, if I had to guess. That's an official guess. These are conch shells, yes? We got some univalves, some bivalves, halves of bivalves. And if I had to guess what we were talking about, it would be pearls. I've been given a box. This is not, after all, an unclothing channel, it is an unboxing channel. So let's take a thing out of a box. Oh, wow. Got it, I heard a click. Well, now I can't really see it, but I saw different colors of pearls, some black, some gold. And the colors correspond to the mantles of the inside of their shells. So you see how this one kind of has a golden color near the lip, near the edge? That's what would indicate a golden pearl. And this one has black near the lip, which would indicate a black pearl. It may not be best for me, but this is a really fine necklace. It's got golden pearls and white pearls, both of which could have come from a shell like this with the golden outside and the white middle. And these are South Sea pearls. Very sought after, highly desirable. And here we have black-lipped oyster shells. And these, as the color suggests around the edge, are what give you the black pearls. Most every pearl on the market that you can buy in your jewelry is gonna be a cultured pearl, either freshwater or saltwater. These are all saltwater pearls. So the white and golden pearls from these oysters can be found in French Polynesia and Australia as well. The black ones can also be found in French Polynesia and Australia, and of course China, where many of the world's pearls come from. So generally speaking, you have two kinds of shells that you can get a pearl from. You've got your bivalves, which are gonna be like clams, oysters, you know, the ones that open up. And then these are univalves, gastropods. So they don't open up, they've got a coiling structure on the inside where the living animal resides. I've been told that this is capital F fragile, so. They were right, I cannot be trusted with these things. <laughs> okay, all right, let's do this. So this is the beauty of, of pearls. Not all of them are perfectly round, and that's totally fine. Some of them come out looking like ballerinas' dresses in the eyes of a particular artist. Even more still, some of them come out, according to some, looking like the body of a camel. I've never seen anything like this. Some people just have a vision. Hey, what do you see in that cloud? Oh, I see an entire camel with a right, is that a monkey? Yes. That's a monkey on the top of a camel. <laughs> That's insane. I, I'm not an artist, I could never be an artist because I would never come up with something like this. The SGR does have a really great high res photo of our little ballerina here. And if you wanted to learn about pearls or really any kind of gemstone at all, the SGR is a great reference. I use it as a resource all the time when I'm researching, writing, or when I just wanna learn a little something. Not all pearls come out round. In fact, we've got even more pearls in here that are not exactly round. Check it out. Baroque pearls. Iridescent as can be, different colors. We've got pink, golden, white, but all of them kind of have this flash to them that just makes this necklace pop. Not to mention the fact that not a single one of them is close to round. Well, maybe this guy up here. But you can kind of see where they began to form like in a sphere and then something happened and the mollusk said, spheres are overrated. I'm just gonna cover this in a mush of nacre. And you get these weird kind of freeform pearls. And we've got two more little bracelets. I don't know who could put these on, not me. These to me are probably dyed because most pearls don't come in the color of beetroot or peas. They're still very pretty though. Pearls are yet another gemstone that can be subject to a little bit of dyeing to change the color a little bit. So I kind of get the sense that we're playing a match the pearl to the shell kind of thing. And if I had to make one guess as to where pearls like this came from, I would say that it is this guy over here, another bivalve with blister pearls still in it. So these are the kind of pearls that form embedded in that nacreous 
membrane on the inside of the shell and they never detach. That's the neat thing about freshwater pearls is that sometimes they can form literally dozens of pearls at a time. The cool thing about cultured freshwater pearls is the first ones came from Lake Biwa in Japan. And a lot of cultured freshwater pearls to this day still come from Japan. So we have Japan and China to thank for a lot of the pearls on the market. Remember I mentioned that the black pearls come from black shells and the golden pearls come from golden shells. Well, you can see the number of colors and iridescence on these pearls, and you see it matched equally in the sheen of this pearl. You could certainly get pearls of several different colors from a shell like this. So when talking about pearls, you know, you've got the body color, which is like the main overall underlying color, like pink, white, and then you've got your iridescence or your orient. And that is the pearlescent effect that makes pearls so famous. All right, we've got another box. Wow, these look awesome. What we have here is a strand of Akoya pearls, Japanese, and the Akoya pearl is part of culturing history. It was Japan's first offering to the international pearl market at large. And they are still desirable today, these Akoya pearls. I mean, there's something to be said about the pure class of a strand of white pearls. It's your grandma's favorite. It's not my grandma's favorite. She kind of likes coral, actually. And then over here, we've got a bracelet made with mother of pearl. And mother of pearl is just kind of a term for the nacre on the inside of the shell that gives the pearl its color like we've been talking about. The formation of a pearl, it's one of those few organic gemstones, it means it comes from the natural processes of a living organism as opposed to natural geological processes. The pearl forms when an irritant finds its way into the shell of, for example, one of our little bivalves here. The mollusk, as a defense mechanism, secretes nacre from that membranous inner lining of the shell, and it slowly begins to coat the irritant in a coat of nacre, which is what is this iridescent material that ultimately, after years and years, becomes a pearl. It does not happen overnight, nay, over the course of a week or several months. Natural pearls are extremely valuable, and at one time in the ancient world, they were the most valuable thing you could get your hands on. I've read of a Roman general who funded a military campaign by selling one of his mother's pearl earrings. So they are still very hard to come by because the natural process, it's such a chance thing. So we have come to culture pearls. Now what does that mean? That means we're basically utilizing that same natural process except it's on our terms. So in the case of saltwater pearls like these Akoyas, the irritant is a bead nucleus and that is a spherical little, usually a piece of mother of pearl that is put into the mollusk. And then the mollusk takes over and starts coating it with nacre. But because of the original shape and form of the bead nucleus, that is more likely to give you a nice spherical pearl, which is what you're looking for, unless you like Baroque stuff. In the case of freshwater pearls, on the other hand, it's usually beadless, and they insert a piece of mantle tissue from a donor mollusk. That is where you get your freshwater cultured pearls. You can usually have a harvest of pearls in about a year's time. That is with saltwater pearls. With freshwater pearls, it's gonna take about three years, so it's still a long process, even though we can do a bunch at a time. It's still a tedious, patient process. So with your Tahitian and your, your cultured South Sea pearls, you can get them pretty large. And I've been told not to open this box, but I will lift it up because it is secure in there. This is an Akoya shell. It looks like it's cracking a little bit, so I won't take it out of the box. It's pretty secure in there. But this is the kind of shell that would give you this kind of pearl. Very pretty, you can see the iridescence on the inside, the mother of pearl, the mantle in there. That's where the magic happens. Hey MTV, this is my crib. This is where I make pearls, slowly, methodically, eventually. The fun continues. Whoa, talk about a variety, oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, the first thing that caught my eye, I'm gonna pull it out, abalone. So you can see with mother of pearl and with the pearlescent pearls, the iridescence of the pearls, you're kind of limited to body color and then that shimmer. With abalone, there are tons of colors in here. There's blue, green, purple, I mean, even a little bit of yellow and it's all, Iridescent. Keeping with the trend of abalone, check that out. So this one is kind of a mosaic of teeny tiny pieces of abalone, but the shimmer is there, the iridescence is out of this world. A little anatomy lesson on the abalone shell. So when you flip it over, it's, it's not a very terribly exciting thing to look at, but you notice this row of holes that kind of spirals along the body of the shell, and I don't know if you can see, but the whole 
kind of shell itself spirals in its growth, kind of like, you know, rings on a tree. And you might notice that the holes near the end of the shell are open. You can see my shirt and my hand through it, but the holes near the beginning are sealed up. These are kind of the all-in-one Swiss Army hole. It's for respiration, for reproduction, and the garbage chute, if you will. And they close up as the abalone ages, the original holes seal up and new holes are formed and open up. So this thing grows over the entire course of its lifetime. It doesn't change shells like a hermit crab or something. It just simply expands. I'm gonna put the abalone away because it was only half of what was in that box. The other half was conch. So these kind of look like pearls, but they're not. They're actually polished pieces of shell, specifically from a conch shell. If these were conch pearls, I would be running out the back door with them. I would get caught immediately. Conch pearls are exceedingly rare and incredibly valuable. They are just far less likely to form in one of these guys than in one of your other mollusks, like a regular pearl. They also live in shallow water, which means conchs are subject to overfishing in a lot of cases and living in that shallow water is pretty treacherous stuff because the temperature can kind of fluctuate a little bit more violently than out in deeper water. And that can kind of influence or hinder the growth of, of a pearl. The final piece from this box, which is also made from conch shell, and it's a nice, oh, it's also got little uh, teeny tiny baby pearls next to it. You know, we got impatient, cracked them open a little bit too early and pulled out little tiny pearls but they go nicely with these polished conch shell pieces, and it, it goes nicely with my shirt, actually. The pearls of the conch, like the mellow pearl, have a sort of flame-like structure that seems just underneath the surface of them, and that makes them also very desirable. And you might be wondering, why don't we just culture conch pearls like we culture all the other you know, fresh and saltwater pearls? Folks have been trying for some time to culture a conch pearl, but it just can't seem to be done just yet. So if you do find one, or if you're being sold one, you can be pretty certain that it is a natural conch pearl. And you're paying millions of dollars. All right, we got one last box. Whoa. That kind of took me a second. I'm not sure what I'm looking at at the moment. Well, we've only got one shell left to match up with. I don't think I've ever seen a pearl from an animal like this, but hold on, check this out. We've saved for last a pretty unique little piece. So this is a spiny oyster, and this pendant and these earrings, they're made from the shell of the spiny oyster. And they are, in this case and often, composited with other stones, especially turquoise. The oyster shell itself, I think, is a great opportunity to talk about the organic layers of a mollusk's shell. So starting with the outside, we have a hard organic conkin material, and though it doesn't look like it now, this spiny oyster gets its name because it is covered in spines, which kind of serve as a defense mechanism along with its already hard shell. But now it's been polished and ground down, it's totally smooth, no spines anywhere to speak of. One layer deeper from the outer shell is a crystalline, actually, layer of calcite. It's calcified on the inside of its shell. And then finally we get into the inner nacreous layer, which is a mix of aragonite and conkin. And it is this nacreous layer that allows for the formation of pearls. So for today's closer look, because I like camels and I like monkeys, and I like it when monkeys ride camels, we'll be taking a look at the monkey riding the camel. Okay guys, that's the end of today's video. Tell me which one of these little pearl things was your favorite. You can't say the camel because that one's my favorite. I'm just kidding. Also, if you wanna see more organic gemstones, let us know which ones you'd like to see us cover next. Don't forget, of course, to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on those future videos. And thank you so much for watching.